Becca here and today I am going to make an alligator Loki bag while I talk about season one of Loki. Just a warning, there's going to be a lot of spoilers. So if you haven't seen season one of Loki, I will put the timestamp of the bag reveal. So if you just want to see the alligator bag <laughs> without any spoilers, I will put the, the timestamp below. Because as soon as the alligator Loki showed up on screen, I knew I had to make <laughs> this into a bag. I mean, I already make dragons and unicorns and bats and all sorts of magical creatures. So I figured an alligator Loki would be the perfect bag. Okay, so when I came up with this idea, I was actually in Toronto and now we're back in LA. But when I was in Toronto, that's where I made the pattern and I cut out all of the pieces in the fabric. But I waited until I came to Los Angeles to actually finish the bag. The first thing I'm going to do is glue the face on. Normally I use a really, really strong SoTac, GemTac glue. Since I want to actually make this bag today, <laughs> I am going to use just a simple glue stick because it dries really fast and it doesn't stick to the machine. So we'll only have to wait an hour before I can actually start sewing the face. So let's get to the face. What I loved really most about season one of Loki was with the show running director, Kate Heron. She was paying homage to Terry Gilliam with Brazil and Time Bandits, but also like Blade Runner. And being obviously the generation growing up with those films, that was huge. I noticed it right away, but I wasn't sure if it was on purpose or not. You know, sometimes it's just like, style or whatever. But then when I looked up her interview, she was all like, oh yeah, please. I uh, Brazil, Blade Runner, Time Bandits, these are all movies that I loved. And she really weaved it in flawlessly and made it her own. That's what was the coolest part is that yes, it was homage to all these wonderful movies, but it was still completely unique, which I freaking loved. Oh, and on a side note, one of my favorite parts is when Loki uh, refers to the timekeepers as space lizards. <laughs> I seriously laugh every freaking time. Uh, space lizards. As I'm making an alligator Loki. Okay, now I'm going to make his eye eyelid kind of work as his eyebrow and make it go up a little. You know, give him a little attitude. Okay, he is all glued on. I'm just going to do the other side and then wait an hour and then I can sew. Now we're gonna sew the face on. Owen, <laughs> Owen Wilson was the best part of the show for me. And I know that's probably because I'm, I'm just a huge fan of his anyway, but he was so perfect in his delivery. And you know, sometimes even if you just read the line, you know it's not even the line itself, it's the way he says it. Like, what was that one where he says, uh, I'm afraid you're gonna stab me in the back or whatever, and Loki's like, I would never do that, that's so, you know, lame. And he's all like, you've literally stabbed 50 people in the back. <laughs> it's just, you could just read that line separately and be like, you've literally, you know, stabbed 50 people in the back, and it still would be funny, but the way he says it, it's just, I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. He's just, his delivery is so good. And I swear to God, if he doesn't get that dang jet ski in season two, there's going to be a rebellion because I think me and everyone else on the planet is just living for the day when Mobius gets his <laughs> jet ski. I mean, there's literally memes. People have created memes and Photoshop pictures of him in his suit <laughs> on a jet ski. This needs to happen. And I'm sure, I'm sure the creators obviously know this and, uh, and they're saving it up for a really good moment. Next, we're going to be sewing these. These are the little horns or spikes that you see on the back of alligators. When I was in Toronto, I couldn't find, you know, uh, crocodile skin green fabric. So I did end up getting this fabric, which I think is a really cool alligator fabric. 
but it doesn't have that crocodile texture. So I figured put the spikes on the back. Since I want them to have fabric on both sides, I have to sew them together first before I sew them on the bag. I am glad that even though it was brief, that they did get Loki to see his past and his arc that we saw in Thor Ragnarok. I mean, he came out of it such a complex, I mean, he's always been a complex character, but he came out of it such a complex and likable character, no longer the bad guy. And so I was actually even reluctant to watch the Loki series at first because I knew that we were plucking out the Loki that hadn't learned any of his lessons <laughs> or gone through any of that pain of losing his mom and him being his fault and and all those things so i'm glad that in the loki show they did let him see that 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 was good like i i really enjoyed that because let's be honest i hardly ever kill off my characters too when i'm writing so you know loki in any form i'm happy with because I was really pissed when they killed off Loki because, yeah, I was mad. And most of the ship that escaped from the planet because it it's kind of like Aliens 3 where they completely made Aliens 2 moot in the first five minutes by killing off Hicks and Newt. It was, the, it was the same feeling. I felt the same feeling. I'm like, okay, you just had this entire movie where we saved the planet. They all got on the ship and they and they and they escaped. And then in the first five minutes, Loki's dead and half the people are dead or more. Of the, it seemed like all the people were dead, but then suddenly they were living on Earth. So I was like, I guess they didn't all go on the ship. I don't know. But anyway, that kind of made me mad. Um, but. I am I am happy. I did love the I did love Loki season 1 and I do love that he's back even if it's a different version of him. So I'm glad that they kind of tried to fix it. If that makes sense. Now to sew the little legs. Speaking of out of time uh, uh, Lokis, I was watching the scene where Loki steals the Tesseract so that he can get to the TVA essentially. And I was trying to figure out, I watched it a few times and I'm sure this has been analyzed by millions of people on the internet who helped him, who helped him get that Tesseract. So I guess that'll be the big theory, big reveal, or maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe people already know. Like, is it Mobius, you know, or is it, you know, somebody that needed Loki to get to the TVA because they knew that getting him there would start this chain of events that would eventually open up the multiverse. That's still a big secret. Obviously the person that, you know, bumbling idiot person or whatever is all dressed in black and you know, you can't tell who they are, obviously. Always fun to speculate, right? <laughs> who is this person? Is it Loki himself? Is it Mobius? Is it, who is it? Who is it? Who gave him the Tesseract? Because it'd be kind of cool if it was Sylvie, thinking, like, Sylvie from the future going back, thinking that I need him, it, you know, the whole, the whole never-ending circle of timelines. <laughs> or himself, I don't know. Or Mobius, I don't know. Those are my three, those are my three that I want it to be. I either want it to be Loki himself, or Sylvie, or Mobius. That's, that's who I want. I don't know, I don't even know if that's what I guess, but that's what I want. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see that in season two. Going on the feet now. Let's, let's talk about Sylvie. <laughs> I love Sylvie. Because I gotta be honest, when they first said they were hunting for another Loki, I, one of my least favorite tropes is mistaken identity. So I was thinking, oh God, are we gonna have a whole season where there's another Tom Hiddleston and then they're fighting against each other and he tricks this person and makes them think it's this guy, but I hate it. I hate mistaken identities. But when you found out it was not only another Loki, but a female Loki, Oh my god, I was in. And I love the actress that played Sylvie. She really brought a good depth to that character and also captured the essence of a Loki, essentially. And she's super powerful and she's super smart and I kind of love how all the Lokis just sort of bow down to her. <laughs> in order for me to put it together, I have to sew on the spikes on the inside insert first and then I also have to do the Loki horn. I made this pattern where I just have to sew right here and then stuff it and then it's gonna go in this little plate and then I have to sew the horns on before I put the whole thing together. So 
Let's do the Loki horns. My one gripe <laughs> is that when they got thrown off the train, Loki showed her that it was a broken temp pad. And I thought for sure that that was just an illusion. I mean, it's Loki. And of course he would say that the, the temp pad was broken and show her that it was broken using illusion because he wants to know more about her. But then, nope. It was just broken. <laughs> I don't know, that was just weird to me. I mean, you know, the planet's about to blow up. She was like giving him all this information because she thought it was the end of the world. And then he was all like, oh, and he would pull it out and be like, it wasn't broken and I charged it and it's fine. And it would have been this really cool Loki moment of a Loki tricking a Loki, but at the same time bonding. But then they ended up being just pulled by the TVA because they had the big love spike, <laughs> which was cool. I, I'm conflicted about that. I don't know how I feel about that. But he fell in love with himself, essentially. To be honest, they had to finish the show up and they had to do a lot in, what was it? Eight episodes? Less than that? Was it six episodes? I don't even remember. But they had to cover a lot of ground. I mean, by the end of it, spoiler, you know, multiverse is open, so, you know, they have to do a lot to get there. So I get it. They had to get him back at the TVA so the whole drama could happen. But I honestly thought that that was a weird missed opportunity. I feel like they could have made that work. And I feel like that was definitely more Loki than what we saw. Now that all the pieces are done, we just have to put the whole little guy to, or girl together. But spoilers, even though I've already spoiled this like a million times in this video already, we are now entering the multiverse. And even though I know I said that I hate mistaken identity tropes, I do, I hate that trope, and I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of them. But my favorite trope of all time to top them all is mashups or crossovers. And because of the multiverse, we've already seen that we're getting a little bit of that in uh, Spider-Man with Doc Ock and then rumors, I'm hoping that they're true, with uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Seriously, I love crossovers. And so even if it's just the Spider-Man universe, I'll just end up watching those like a million times because, oops, I should probably pay attention to what I'm doing. Because <laughs> Tobey Maguire was my favorite Spider-Man. Sorry, but he was. And so to have him as Spider-Man and then just older, and I don't know, I'm just such a sucker for crossovers and multiverses when it's that. When it's a mistaken identity, I hate it. <laughs> I'm so picky. When Sylvie and, and Loki got there at the end, it was he who remains, which, you know, we've all kind of know is Kane the Conqueror. We're already sort of seeing him in at least on his IMDb. We see him in a lot of upcoming movies, so we already know he's gonna be a character that we're gonna get to know. Because I also feel like this whole What If series on Disney Plus is maybe some of the people or some of the worlds and some of the multiverses that we're going to see. Haley Atwell is Captain Carter, I'm just saying. So that could be really cool to tie in those What If animations in future cinematic worlds, even if it's just the Loki season two and not the actual movies. I am here for it. <laughs> and here he is. <laughs> he worked. Oh. oh my gosh. He's so cute. They got the little spikes here. I had to stuff him a lot to give him sort of the body. The purse part is a little bit tugged in. I made it the gold, I thought that'd be pretty. But I think with our 3D printer, I'm going to put an insert in here because then it'll push like a, just a little square or a rectangle that's the size of this opening and, and depth because then it'll push all stuffing aside and I can just easily put stuff in here. <gasps> but here he is, let me zip him up. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, this is so cute. Hello. Oh my God, I can't wait to wear him. Definitely gonna bring him to Comic-Con. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed watching me make this little guy while talking about my thoughts on season one of Loki. What are your thoughts? What do you think about the show? What was your favorite part? Was there anything that bugged you like me and the temp pad and the throwing from the train? <laughs> Seriously, if that's my only gripe, I'd say that's pretty darn good. But let me know what you think. 
And thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.